Next guest has been covering school shootings for more than two decades, ever since the Columbine shooting in 1999. Dave Cullen is the author of Columbine and Parkland, Birth of a Movement, and Dave joins us now. Dave, you and I have obviously had too many of these conversations after school shootings, but I am um, happy to talk to you today because I do think that much of the conversation is focused on the wrong thing. Why aren't we talking? Yes, the police screwed up. They admitted it. They screwed up horribly in this case. But so did the gun store seller who sold the two AR-15s to this clearly troubled 18-year-old. Why don't we focus in more on that and figure out how to stop it before the guy shows up at a school with an AR-15? I totally agree. Um, you know, I was uh, talking to some friends of mine yesterday, and you know, I went on a uh, actually another CNN show yesterday, and I was frustrated after because we talked too much about that, and uh, including me, it's hard not to. But I, I agree, it's sort of changing the subject. And you know, one of the things that the Parkland kids did that was so um, revolutionary, what really changed things, is because after these things, we have you know all these conversations about you know mental health, about media coverage, about guns, about all these different things, and those kids focus the conversation by saying like. You guys can talk about whatever you want. We picked one. We think the most important thing is guns. All we're going to talk about is guns. You want to bring up David Hall would say, like, you want to bring up mental health? Great. We should solve that. Go ahead and do that. But I'm not talking to you about that. We're talking about guns. That's the thing. And they kept us on guns because that is the right thing. You know, yes, if the cops had gotten in there sooner, which they obviously they totally should have done sooner, like, but then maybe, what, 15 people would have died? Um, you know, the only way to stop this water, well, you know, I've said for years, like once the shooting starts, it's way too late. We have failed. We have yeah. to solve this before that with real with real gun safety legislation. Yeah. And by the way, I mean, I don't know if you were listening to our previous segment with two, you know, former uh, high level law enforcement uh, officials. There's no law that says that you have to sell a gun to an 18 year old who comes into your store and there's no law that says you can't ask some questions you know there are all sorts of screening questions that police and doctors ask people all the time are you feeling depressed are you feeling mm -hmm. isolated are you considering harming anyone why can't we just have gun store owners or sellers start asking some of those questions well that would be a great start Although, you know, I mean, they're for the profit motive. They would, you know, prefer to sell a gun. It's not in their interest. Um, I mean, I think we, you know, need to legislate some of these things. And, you know, an, an easy start is like not 18 year olds. I actually, I didn't think about it. I'd never heard about this idea, which of course makes sense at 18, your, your, your slate is wiped clean. So any background check is not gonna check anything you, you've done. Right. So another thing is right. raising the age of 21, Aside from it to also be the age required to buy cigarettes or alcohol or, you know, um, is that, okay, so then at least you've got, we got three years of history of you, of, of you know, whether you, you should fail a background check. Yeah. That seems like an you know, easy thing, you know, a starter thing to do. You know, one of the things we talk about on gun safety is, um, you know, your, your reporter was talking about whether this time will be different. And, like, we know this time won't be different. You know, Congress is not going to pass a sweeping uh, gun safety bill. That's not happening this time. Um, what, how do you know? You I know, mean, how, how can you say that so definitively? Well, you know, I, I hope to be wrong, but because we've got a 50-50 Senate and, you know, two of the Democratic members, Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema, um, are unlikely to be bored on, and bored on these things. They might come along on something um, and then all the Republicans normally oppose. Um, and so, you know, and you need 60. Uh, with the filibuster. So how's that going to happen? Um, they, they may compromise and find some small thing, like now they're talking about red flag laws or something, which would be great. Uh, but that's a small thing. Um, but what we can do is incremental things, including so many laws are being passed at the state level. Uh, we need more states. Some of them have, but we need more states to start raising that age to 21. Uh, will that solve the problem completely? No. We need a whole list of different things. You know, the gun problem is also a multi-faceted problem. You know what? Two-thirds of the gun deaths, who, who dies from two-thirds of the gun deaths? Suicides. People shooting other people is not even the majority of the problem. Suicides are. 
you know, so obviously yeah. we need something aimed at suicides. We need something aimed at inner city people, which is also the biggest part of the problem. 90% yeah. of the people are inner city people of color. It's, you know, mass shootings, uh, we need to address. That's one of many. That's a tiny yes. fraction of the yes. total. So we need yes. a, a laundry list of different things that address the different types of problems and start one by one. Um, like, that's the solution. There's not a single panacea. Right. But you have to start somewhere. And so the idea when Congress starts saying, well, we have enough laws. I mean, you're never going to stop a bad guy, you know, who wants to do something. That's just not true. You have to start somewhere, as we know. Um, Dave, I only have a few seconds left. I know you talked to Gabby Giffords about it. What did she say? Yes. And I have a, a question and answer with her in Vanity Fair that just posted yesterday. Um, a couple of things. The biggest thing is understand the difference between your enemy and or your adversary and potential negotiator. The adversary is the NRA. They're extremists who do not represent most of their own membership. Gun owners, most of them want to do something. Polls show over and over that they want sensible gun safety. Those are the people we need to be collaborating with. And one of the key things is like forgetting the idea of guns, gun control. Never use that phrase again. It's gun safety. They're huge advocates of gun safety. That's yeah. something we can them on and figure out with them. Yeah. Start to make yeah. talking about it that way. Dave Kahn, um, great to talk to you despite the circumstances. Thanks so much for the insights.